Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Tranquility, which is a card game all about having a nice peaceful tranquil voyage from the bottom left of this grid all the way up to the top right there. We're going to be trying to fill it up with numbered cards, which we can place anywhere in this grid, but as the grid starts to fill up, we're going to have tighter and tighter restrictions to be able to place anything. This is on Kickstarter right now. You can go over to the campaign. It's linked in the description or up in the corner of the screen to see all of the final stuff. This is all prototype material, but it should give you a good idea of what this is like. And as always, I mentioned when I have been paid to make a playthrough, an overview of a Kickstarter game, and that is the case here. So let's get started. This is a solo play of the game. With, no, with more players, we would still have the same hand of cards. We would be doing the same things, but we would, you know, we would be working together trying to achieve this goal, but we wouldn't be allowed to talk about what's in our hands and our plans, apart from when a start card comes up, but we'll get to that when it happens. I have a hand of five numbered cards. I have 29, 39, 42, 56, 59. I need to play these into the grid. On your turn, you have two options. Now, your first option is play a card. If you just put it somewhere on its own in the grid, then that is fine. You don't have to pay anything. But if you put it next to another card, then you have to pay the difference in numbers in cards. So if I put 56 next to 59, there's a three difference there. I would have to discard the other three cards in my hand to be able to do that. And the deck is kind of a timer. When the deck runs out, if we haven't filled this grid and we've got a start card down here and a finished card up in that corner, then we lose. So you don't want to discard too many cards. Your other option, though, is to just discard two cards. If you just have things that would be terrible, then you can just discard two cards, hope to draw better things for your next turn. The next two as well, you can kind of think of this, even though it's a grid, you can think of it as a great big number line. So if I have 42 here and I want to put 56 there, 42 isn't next to 56. But if I had 56 down in this corner, well, you wouldn't have it this low, would you? But if I, if I had 56 on the edge here and I have 59 in the first section of the next row, that is next to it. So I can discard three to be able to play that. It's not on its own. So you can kind of think of it as a great big number line, but who has got the table for something like that? So I need to make my choice. I'm not going to discard two cards right away. So I'm going to play something. What would I like to play? So I can kind of planning how this is going to go out. Where do I think 29 is going to go? Because there's 36 spaces, a six by six grid. I need to put 36 cards down out of 80, which sounds simple, but yeah, it's harder than it seems. So especially in a multiplayer game when you're not communicating with each other, you're not allowed to. So I'm kind of think. let's think of the low end here of 29. If we kind of think of, I'm kind of thinking 29 if we kind of halve the grid, we would have the first 12 numbers here, 24, 29 would go like maybe there. Although that is getting towards halfway, isn't it? I think 29 on this edge here. That's what I'm going for. I draw back up to five and then it's the next player's turn. But obviously it's just me here. It's just you and me, isn't it? So now I have the five. Where should that go? Like, and I can keep going from the 29. I can think, like, maybe we'll leave about... There's a 10 difference here. Maybe we'll leave four gaps. And then I have the 39 there. I could be doing that. I'm thinking the 5, though. Yeah, we'll hold on to that for now. I'm thinking the 5. How many gaps shall I leave? There's four numbers. So I could leave two gaps there. Or do we just be conservative? Because, you know, we don't know where they are in the deck. So if they come out right at the bottom, it's very risky to leave a big gap there. I think I'm going to put the five there. And then watch me draw like the one now. Oh, it's 47. So, apologies for overlapping the border cards, by the way. I can't zoom out any further than this. It's as big as it goes. So, I have to be thinking up there. Shall, shall I stick with my 39 plan of there? I think I'm going to stick with that. But now all of these things are out on their own. Where would 17 be in this equation? Two at a time, it would be around there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with this kind of two counting method for now. You're always happy this early on in the game. It's when it starts to close in on you. So if we put... So if we put 23 there, there isn't much difference though between 23 and 29. I might be making the gaps too small here. I'm going to put 23 there for now. 
all these things just out on their own so we don't have to worry about paying anything. I have 78. What if I put 78 right up in that corner? Because there's only two, the, the card to go up to 80. It's 1 to 80. Yeah, I'm going to go right in the corner here. Draw up again. So I haven't had to discard anything yet. So I'm, I'm quite happy with what I've got. So 42. We could put 42 there. And then we'd just be waiting for the 40 or 41. It's, that's it. That is risky, though. That you, you need one of those two cards to come out. Or we could wait and just try and plan out that, you know, if, if 42 is going to go there, then maybe 47 would go about there. And just leaving these bigger gaps gives you more freedom when you don't quite know what order things are going to come out. We have 60 now, which is you know, it's right next to 59. So where would that go? What if 59 went about there? What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little trick, I think. I'm going to put 56 up here first and then just draw back up because that's not next to anything. I'm then going to play 60 on its own up there, not next to anything. So that's okay. I've got 71 now. But now the 59 I knew I wanted to put there, I know it's one difference and I was always going to have to pay this one. When you have two differences here, you choose the smallest and pay that difference. So instead of having to pay three between 56 and 59, I only have to pay one from 59 to 60. What am I going to get rid of, though? So 42's not that close to things. 50... Maybe 71... 62's quite close. I don't want to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of 50. So they go face down. You're not allowed to know what you discarded. You have to just kind of keep that in your head. I draw back two cards, so I have 10 and 54. 10's not great. It, well, it can go off on its own somewhere. So what about, what about there for 10? But we have to race up from 10 to 17 in not that many cards. Yeah. Might have made the gaps too small down this end. Now, 80 is a dead card in this game now because 78, top right corner is the highest, so this is a free discarder. So what do we have? 42, 54, I think 54 needs to go next to the 56, doesn't it? 62 probably needs to go next to the 60. 71 could kind of go off on its own. Let's do 54, and I'm going to discard 71 and 80 to do that because there's two difference between the numbers. It would have been nice to do my little cheat again and have another one in store already for it. But I didn't do that. So I've got 19 now. So what next? I have, oh, I need to draw another one. We have 25. So not quite close to anything. 25 has to go here. And it's a two difference. I don't really want to get rid of the 19 this quickly. 42. 42 can still go off on its own, can't it? I mean, we just had the worry, didn't we? If, don't know whether to put it there or there yet. 62. If 62 is going there, 64 could get ready up here. And I don't have to pay anything extra for it. Draw another one. Four. Oh, that's brilliant. I only have to discard one thing. So what would I discard? Maybe 42. Or the 19. There's, there's other cards that can go around here. I'm going to play the four and discard the 19. So I need two more cards. Oh seeing in the future. I've got a six. Oh, that's good. But I'd, I'd kind of like a card there, for, but then you have to pay for there. I have 72. So 72. Yeah, this is this, this gap's too small, I think. I'm going to have to end up paying a lot of discards to jump from 64 to 78 in four cards. I have 72. I think 72 could go here. Yeah. I have 70 now. 70 could go there by discarding two cards. What would we discard, though? See, 62 is quite close. 42, we're not sure about. Although there's not that many cards in this gap of three here. 25, there's going to be other cards. We're going to play the six and get rid of the 25. This is one difference from five to six. Draw two cards. We have 66 and 13. So 66 next to the 64, that'd work out quite nicely. 66 and then the 70. 
What would we get rid of, though? 13 is kind of off on its own. I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of 13 and 42. Not sure about this. And I'm going to put 66 up here. Yeah, we've still got a lot of deck. We haven't seen the start card either yet. So we have a 1, so that's a free discard. Can't fit the 1 in. 24, right next to 23 there. So I think that's, that's what I'm going to do. Put the 24 right there. No gap anymore. Discard the 1, and we're okay. Two more. Oh, we have a start card now. So this would happen in a multiplayer game as well. The game stops, and now you'd be allowed to discuss what you want to do. Because in a multiplayer game, between us, however many players there are, we need to discard eight cards out of the game. In the solo game, though, you get to draw eight cards, and then you need to discard eight. So I could just blindly discard these and not go through any pain. Start card goes in that corner. But yeah, we're going to have to look at these. So let me just uh, lay them all out. So let's see here. We have two. Now, four is our lowest card, so two is a free discard. So that's one of them. We have 28. Now, 24, 29. So 28 is also a card that can go out. So that's two of the eight. 34, there's this gap that would be quite nice to just place in the middle of nowhere. 36, similar. 41 would be nice for starting to get to this gap in 47. 46, the same. We're only allowed to keep four cards, though. 52, two away from 54. 62 is one we had before. We wanted it for that gap. 70 would be nice for that gap there. 76 would be nice for that gap there. Now, these finish cards, you have to play a finish card into that very top right gap there in the border. But it has to be the last card you play after you've filled up the grid. There are five of these in the game, though. So as long as we remember, you're not allowed to go through the discard parts. You, as long as you remember that we've got rid of two of them, then we're okay. So that's four of the eight cards. And we've done two of the five finish cards. So I have to kind of hope that other cards come out here. Things that are one difference I think we should definitely hang on to. I don't want to get rid of the 30s just because, you know, this needs filling up, this big gap here. 46 we've got to keep. It's only one different. So fewer things to discard. I... I think 70 is a good one to keep because that's quite a big gap there, 66 to 72, and that's a close card. I think there are more things between 72 and 78 we could use. Although that's only discarding two. And I think 62 would be really nice for that gap. 52 would be nice as well. 34 and 36, I didn't want to get rid of. Oh, this is, this is so rough about the start card. We're going to keep 34 and 36 and 46 and 70. Yes, everything's bad that we're discarding from this point onwards, but we had to get rid of eight of them. We draw one to replace the start card. That's going to be 61. Okay, 61's better though. We didn't we get rid of 62 just? So yeah, not not too bad. But we've kept things we desperately want, and then drawn thing that I want <laughs> drawn a thing that I want even more. So I think we're gonna get rid of 36 to place the 61 up here. Draw two more. Hopefully they're ones we're not really bothered about. Seven. Oh, seven would be brilliant. And 32 would be good to go next to the 34. I think I'm going to pop 34 out on its own there. And then we can have 32 there in the future. We have 73. Oh, that's, that's even better. For that gap, we discarded one, didn't we, that wasn't perfect. I was thinking that there are more cards that can go here later on, even though that's only a one discard. That's a one discard. What about there, though? What if 67 or 71 came out? We're going to get rid of 70, even though I did specifically keep that, to put a 73 up here. Then we don't have to think of that. Draw two more. I have 11. Oh, that could go right there. And 16 could go right there. So all these are one different. I don't want to get rid of these ones. 46 is one different as well. Yeah, you, got, you have to say goodbye to something. What if, you know, 32, there are other numbers that can come up there? Yeah, we're going to go with the 11 in the corner there, I think. And discard. A card we did like. 27. There's no space for 27, so that's a free discard. The finish is also a free discard. So let's put 7 there. Discard a finish. I think that's the third finish card. 
We need to keep track of that. That's the fourth finished card, so there's one more in the deck. So, 68. 68? 68 is a nice one. It's two different there. 27 is a discarder, isn't it? 46 is a discarder. 16 is... Let's discard 16. And let's get rid of the 27 that we couldn't play anywhere anyway. Draw two more up. 20. That's not too bad. 43. I think... Now what I want to do is put the 43 there and then pay for the 46 later. But I'm kind of thinking now, 39 to 43, what if I've discarded all of those cards? And there isn't space anymore. I think 68 can go up here and we'll discard the 20 we could never play and the fourth finish. So there's one more finish in here. And we'll draw three up. I really hope I haven't left the finish in the box or something there. Oh, there shouldn't be another start card in there. You never saw that. So the three I'm replacing it with. 33, 35, and 12. So 12 is a discarder. 33 and 35. Brilliant there. 43 and 46. We're in the same situation there, aren't we? So 33. I'm going to play there and discard our free discard of 12. And we have 67. That can be discarded. Three can be discarded. So let's put let's put 35 there. Get rid of the three. Ooh. There are some big gaps. 75 is okay to discard. 63 is okay to discard. Which leaves us with. I think we'll just put the 46 down because we're not cutting anything off then. I would like to put the 43 down just to save, you know, put that down first and then put the 46 down just to save discarding one. But in this in unsure situation, I want to leave myself with as much space as possible. 77 is okay to discard. 14 is okay to discard. So now you, you enter the realm of, I'm just going to discard two cards with my turn and not play anything because, yeah, I'm worried about this section. 18 is perfect there. 30 is a discarder, so we'll play the 18 there and discard the 30. Uh, two more cards. 8, we're okay to discard. 79, we're okay to discard. So I think I'm going to discard 2 again. Yeah, the deck is looking smaller and smaller. 40. Oh, okay. So now we've got 40, 43. Brilliant. We don't have to worry about that gap. 55, we have to discard. So 39 to 40 is just one card. And I can discard one of these, no problem. I have this nice little stash of cards I'm not worried about. 21 would be nice there. 48, perfect there. It would be nice to put a card there for that first. So 43 is going to be three cards to discard. And I don't want to discard that many. So I'm just going to put 21 up there. I've got two I'm happy to discard. So that's okay. And that's gaps filling in. So we have 74, we're happy to discard. 65, same. 57, same. So I've got three I can discard now, so I'm going to put 43 there. Discard these three. Draw four up. Not many cards at all left in here. So we have 15, that's a discarder. 44 is a discarder. 37 can go there, brilliant. 22 is a discarder. So, let's see, 48 can go up there and just discard one card. So, draw two up. 26 can be discarded. Yeah, anything below uh, 48 really can be discarded. So, 45 is no good. It's a different gap to be worried about now, isn't there? So, 37 can go there. I need to discard two because the difference between 37 and 39. Draw three more. Oh, here we go. Here's the run we went. So we've got the finish card. We have to hang on to that. It's the last one. It's the last one if I was counting right. But we have the cards we need, don't we? 50. So let's play 53 first, because that's the fewest discards. Get rid of one there. Draw two back up. 58's no good. 31's no good. 51 there. So two difference between 51 and 53. Discard these two. Draw back up. Three, there's still a card in the discard pile. Brilliant. So we've got cards there. Doesn't matter because the journey is being managed. Mischief managed. Finish in the corner. 
And wow, I didn't think that we'd make it. I thought I'd left a gap too big. But luckily, there was just a little cluster of those 50s at the bottom of the deck. So with one card to spare before failure, and it was the 49, with one card to spare, we've managed the journey. So there we go. That is a solo game of Tranquility. It's a bit different with more players because obviously you've got your own ideas of how this grid is going to end up and the cards in your hand are greatly going to influence that and you don't really know what other people are discarding either. You've all got your own individual face-down discard piles. So yeah, <laughs> without communication, it gets very, very anxious in a very the mind kind of way. Now there is a Stormy Seas expansion available as well quickly run through what they will add. So for Jagged Rocks, the game starts with the Jagged Rocks on one of the border cards for a row. The row that it's in is kind of impenetrable. It's got Jagged Rocks in it. We can't voyage into that row. So you have to play somewhere else. And then when you've had your turn, you move it to a different row. Obviously, you can't communicate and you don't know where someone else is desperate to play. It has to be moved to a row with an empty space, by the way. You can't just uh, cheat and put it in a full row. And if you don't want to move the jagged, uh, the jagged Rock cards, you can discard two cards. There are five sea monsters that can be mixed into the deck. When you draw one of these, it stays in your hand. There's no way of getting rid of this. There's no discarding a sea monster. The only way to get rid of it is to play it onto an already played card in the grid, and the sea monster will eat that card, and they are both out of the game. That's the only way to get rid of the sea monsters. Also, if somebody tries to end the game with the finished card and the grid's full and someone's got a sea monster in their hand, you do not win and the game has to carry on until uh, all the sea monsters have been played. And you don't have to have all five. It's, it's depending on the difficulty you want to play with. Uh, there is another way of adjusting the difficulty. You can remove a certain number of cards from the deck to make it more and more difficult and you don't know which have been removed. So <laughs> even harder. And then there is the storm and compass cards. So we have compass cards that go off to the side there in a supply. And we have various storms that can come out from the deck. The yellow storm goes right out in front of you if you draw it. And your hand limit, you discard down to three cards, your hand limit is now three cards until this is gotten rid of. The purple storm, when you draw one of these, it works similarly to the jagged rocks. It needs to go on a row and makes that row. You can't play to it while the purple storm is there. And unlike the jagged rocks, you don't move it around a lot. It can only be removed by a compass. And the orange storm, when you draw this, it also goes in front of you and it takes away your option of placing a card anywhere in the grid. Your only options are play a card next to an existing card or discard two cards while this is in front of you. You get rid of storms by playing compass cards, but how do you get them? Well, when the start card's played, you get one compass card. If you fill an entire row with consecutive numbers, so really hard to do, then you'll get a compass card. And if somebody decides to discard their whole hand, the team can get a compass card. And if it's the player with the uh, the yellow storm in front of them, then they only have to discard three cards. They don't have to, because, yeah, there's a little benefit for that. You're not losing as many cards. And then the team between them, once they've got compass cards, the team between them can decide which storms to get rid of. And finally, there is a, another variant to the game where you can play with this high arch. So you have borders in this shape and you need to fill in the kind of the pillars, the feet of the arch before you're allowed to start filling in the main part. So there we go. That's everything that I've got in my prototype. Hope that gave you a good idea of what the game is like and whether or not you'll be interested in finding out more on the campaign page. So if you're not interested in my opinion, then you can stop right there. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. But if you are one of those people that's interested, I'm about to say it right now. So I am a big fan of games like, like we really enjoyed, well, I really enjoyed The Mind, <laughs> Rach didn't, but uh, we both love the game and its various iterations. These games where you have, you know, it's, it's, a, it's quite a simple rule set and you are using, you know, a similar thing, a, a deck of numbered cards, in this case, 1 to 80. And it's, you know, they, they have their varying rules of communication uh, the game allows for more than this you, you're not allowed to talk about what's in your hand but you can say oh don't play in this pile please there's four piles in it and you can kind of say you know please don't play here and here and here and here <laughs> don't play anything until my turn but uh, yeah in in this you have more similar to the mind in the communication that there is none you're not allowed anything the the rules do say you know if you you're free to make your own house rules and uh, communicate how you would like. Obviously, if you were allowed to just say the numbers in your hand, it would be ridiculously easy. So you can't do that. But it would be interesting, you know, if you were finding it too difficult, then it would be interesting, 
you know, a, a kind of, I think a kind of the game solution where you could kind of say, please don't play to this gap. You know, I, I really want to, I really need to play something there next to, uh, but you can't really say what it is. But playing it with the actual no communication rule, I really like the tension that it has because you have that uncertain path through it that you have to kind of, the, the way that it's put out that there's you know there's 80 cards and you only need 36 of them you know, there isn't really a surefire way of you know, arranging this grid i imagine if you kept playing it with the same players you might come up with conventions and you always end up putting a certain number somewhere or something like that uh, but yeah you you're not sure how you are going to interpret this grid based on you know kind of thinking how are 80 cards going to be distributed into this, but also with the numbers in your hand and the numbers that other players are going to place. You know, all of that is going to make for a radically different idea in your head. And then the cards that you draw through the game are going to alter that further. So I really like the kind of the tension and the un un unsureness that you have, the uncertainty that you have when you are playing everything. Because, you know, it's, it, in a solo game, you know, you're only messing up yourself and you can kind of think through these things and... It, of course, depends on your memory of you remembering what you discarded. But in a game with more players, you don't get to see their discard piles. So you don't know what they've gotten rid of. And that adds even more attention to things like the finish card. You know, there's only five in the game. So when you get one, depending on the number of players, you might think, you know, what if they've discarded all of their finish cards? But then at the same time, what if five of you are all hanging on to finish cards and wasting space in your hand because you're all worried about it? You know, there's, there's always tension involved in how much of a space am I leaving? Which cards am I going to discard you? Or as the grid starts to fill up, you know, it gives you a kind of illusion of freedom to begin with. You have this whole grid empty and you can put things everywhere, but then you start to see as these gaps start to emerge that kind of remain unfilled as the deck dwindles and dwindles. You start to think, you know, have I made this gap too big? Have I gotten rid of the cards that would have gotten me out of this mess? And as the grid starts to close in on you, you start to realize the areas in which you've painted yourself into a corner. So yeah, I'm, I'm predisposed based on those other games to kind of like the, to like the the format to begin with but i really like the twists that tranquility adds to a, the kind of put 80 cards in order kind of formula it's it's one where yeah it's it's not quite as portable as those in the sense that well it does come in a lovely little cube box but so it's portable in that sense but yeah it's it's not like a kind of play anywhere one like the mind or the, the game would be in that you only need a few piles of cards you do need this big grid out or with the high arch you need a bigger area so that's something to bear in mind but yeah as long as you've got a table that fits six by six cards you don't need the border if you don't really need it it, it really helps you with kind of organizing this grid when it's empty but yeah if you're really starved for space then yeah, what am I talking about now? <laughs> if you've got a smaller than a 6x6 grid table, then maybe have a think about it. Play it on the floor, though. It's a good time. Anyway, I'm going to go now. I hope this has been informative or helpful in some way. If you would like to find out more playthroughs, I've done hundreds on this channel. If you would like to support the channel, then there's patreon.com forward slash slicker drips, and you can vote on videos and get involved in all sorts, and it would be massively appreciated. But I think it's time to go and film another one right now. So thank you for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye. Bye.